What's up? The Ruin Warbler. What? Are you serious? Yeah, come over here. I'm on my way. That's so Love dope. It. It's gonna be a lifer for me. Where is it? I am not exactly sure. I am still disappointed and didn't get to see the cerulean, gave it a really good try, scouring the whole area and just not really seeing much. So, it's a lot of cool stuff. It's hard not to be sad about that one, but hopefully I'll be able to get it at a different time. To find Derek a Cerulean Warbler, we went to a place where they would be as close to a sure thing as they can get, Wyalusing State Park. Located along the Mississippi River, Wyalusing is one of the top birding destinations in Wisconsin and hosts a variety of different species that are hard to find in other parts of the state. We left early in the morning to give ourselves the best chance to get warblers while they were still up and calling. We fueled up and headed out west, brushing up on our bird calls along the way. Was that Kentucky? Yeah. Let's see what that must be yellow for a bit. Yeah. I don't think I would know that one if I heard it. It sounds pretty ordinary, doesn't it? Yeah. It sounds kind of like a yellow warbler. I'm honestly a little worried about the bugs. We've seen a lot of black flies lately, and that's one thing that can just make any outdoors trip pretty miserable, is getting bit by bugs. That is true. There will be a lot of canopy there too, so it depends what kind of bugs. I'd rather get bit by warblers. I mean, they have a pretty nasty bite. We entered the park and immediately saw birds flying around and making noise. We followed the road with our windows down, listening for calls of some of the rare birds we wanted to find. Our first stop was along Long Valley Road where the park meets the Mississippi. Here we got Derek his first ever look at the bird he had missed on weeks earlier. Got it. Nice. So that's your life for Cerulean, isn't it? Yeah. How's it Dude, feel? It feels good, especially after missing it the first time. I told you we'd get it this year after missing it. Oh, I think it. I think I see it still. The cerulean warbler is a small bird with a short tail that is normally seen foraging high in the treetops. Males have a white stomach and throat with a sky blue neckband, blue streaking along the sides, dark streaking along the back, and two white wing bars. Females are blue-green without streaking and are painted with a slightly yellow stomach along with cream-colored wing bars and a light-colored eyebrow. Cerulean warblers are found in the eastern United States and winter in South America. They form cup-shaped nests on branches in the forest canopy and feed mostly on insects. The cerulean warbler population is listed as being in decline and experienced around a 72% decline between 1970 and 2014. As so far we were able to track down a cerulean, wore my teal turquoise today in honor of getting it and it worked. While the leafed out trees made viewing any bird in the treetops challenging, and the swarms of black flies made standing in one place uncomfortable, the sheer number of birds lining the road and the truly breathtaking landscapes made us excited and eager to see what else we could find. The so ceruleans will be all over the place down this road, down Long Valley Road. Prothonotaries, this is a great place for. Kentucky is going to be farther in that way. And then, uh, I have a spot for yellow-throated that we can try a at a secret campground. spot. Look at that, how the trees just go right up there. That is gorgeous. They just are so high up. It's like a mountain. Yeah. Having crossed Cerulean Warbler off of our list, we turned our attention to the flooded forests that make up the perfect habitat for the prothonotary warbler. Here we found several birds gathering nesting material, but the prothonotary warblers proved to be elusive. I want to get prothonotary. It's always it's nice. you should be able to get here. Eventually, a prothonotary warbler made itself visible, staying mostly out of view at first. But then, it popped out into the open and put on an incredible show. Okay. 
The prothonotary warbler is a bright yellow bird with a black bill and eyes and gray-blue wings that is often found in wooded areas near water. Their range covers much of the eastern United States and in some regions they are referred to as the swamp warbler. Like most warblers, their diet consists mostly of insects and arachnids. Prothonotary warblers are one of only two warblers that nest in the cavities of standing dead trees or nest boxes, with the other being the Lucy's warbler. Prothonotary warblers are monogamous during breeding season and are aggressive in defending their nest site. Like the cerulean warbler, prothonotary warblers are currently considered to be a species in decline due to habitat loss, and populations declined around 42% between 1966 and 2015. That was awesome. We just saw the prothon- we were having trouble getting looks at the prothonotary, and then it came in this puddle was hopping from stick to stick, took a bath, then perched up and preened for like a full minute. It was so cool. And what about the cuckoo? Cuckoo's been eluding us so far. First, we heard one over there, and then a train blocked me from going to see it. You've got to be kidding me. I was just going to cross to look for the cuckoo, and now there's a train. Then we had one fly over here, and then we thought we were going to see it, and we didn't, and now it's calling again, so we're still going to try to find it. Derek actually has an obsession with cuckoos for some reason. He just is not excited about anything the way he's excited about cuckoos. Did you get it in the camera? I got it in the camera, yeah. What was it doing? So, they've been super elusive. It was, I thought it was right above me, then it went in this tree in the middle. Then it flew way over there, and somehow I got the camera to focus on the trees behind it. Like behind the trees that were blocking me, and then I was able to go down and actually get like a view. Super long range, super shaky, but you can definitely tell it's a yellow blue cuckoo. And I'm pretty sure there were two of them. Where'd they go now? They went deeper into the forest. I don't think we're gonna be able to see them. Hey, you, awesome. you got them. Ready for a yellow billed cuckoo. From the river, we headed back up the road. We're walking along the uh, road here trying to hear the Kentucky warbler because I think that it likes to hang out on this road usually. So we're going to see if we can listen for it and then maybe get a view of it. Spectacle. The guys. bugs are still out, but it's beautiful here. If there were no bugs, this would be just ideal. Along the way, we encountered some of Wyalusing's non-avian inhabitants, including a much larger version of one common arthropod. So we were driving and I thought this was a big caterpillar in the road, but it turns out it's a huge millipede and it's grayish olive green with these red stripes. And look at all those legs, look at that. That's crazy. Look at how they move. After driving and walking for a while and finding many other species, including scarlet tanager, eastern kingbird, and eastern towhee, we heard the song of the Kentucky Warbler blasting from the dense bushes. That's it. We just need to find it. Everything's so leafed out. Sounds like he's close though. Tell he. It's like he's right there, but I can't see it. We waited for the Kentucky Warbler to make an appearance, but never did get a good look at it. From Long Valley Road, we moved on to try and find a yellow-throated warbler. We searched the campgrounds, finding some different flycatcher species in the process, but never being able to locate our last target bird. We did, however, take in the spectacular landscape we saw as we peered out over the Minnesota-Wisconsin border. We just got done here at Wyalusing. We're ending at this time of the day because the activities really died down. We ended up not seeing some of the birds we wanted to see, like the Kentucky, but I'm super stoked about seeing the yellow-billed cuckoo and finally getting that cerulean warbler. We ended up getting some really good views, super pumped about that, and like what a great view and beautiful day out here to enjoy some birding. Yeah, we had a really awesome day, even though it's kind of late in the season and uh, there's a lot of bugs out here and the leaves on the trees are all out now, making it difficult to see. Uh, but we still had a great day, and we'll have to come back again and do another episode about Wyalusing to see every bird that it has to offer here. Wyalusing State Park is undoubtedly one of the most beautiful places in Wisconsin to visit. With its proximity to the Mississippi River and rolling forested hills, it attracts birds that are extremely difficult to find in most other parts of the state. We were thrilled to get such good views of the cerulean and prothonotary warblers, but we will certainly need to come back again to see if we can find every bird the state park is known for. 
Until then, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. So after missing that cerulean warbler earlier in the year, you finally got it. Feels good. Does it? I feel like I'm being interviewed on ESPN. You are. How does it feel <laughs> to finally get this cerulean warbler? Well, it's just been a lot of work and preparation, and I'm glad it finally paid off. Did you think you would ever get it? I thought so. I wasn't sure about the time frame, but, you know, it, it was worth the wait. How much did the PEDs contribute to your success in getting this bird? What, what P? I've never, I've never used those. So in court, you'd vehemently deny using I have. performance enhancing? I have and will, yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll see how that shakes out. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> I wonder if anyone's been bit by a warbler. Probably banding. Somebody's probably banded, yeah. banded once, taking a chunk. A <laughs> chunk? A chunk. Took my finger Took off. Took a finger, yeah. That'd be the yellow-breasted chat. <laughs> They're wily.